Hey traders, welcome back to my channel. Sorry, I didn't upload yesterday. I was so close to hitting my, like I wanted to post every day of the month. Um, and I didn't hit it because I was off. I like pulled something in my neck. Anyway, so I'm back today. <laughs> I won't be uploading every day in October, but I'll try to upload two to three times a week now that I'm on a consistent schedule. And in today's video, it's gonna be a pretty another pretty quick one. We're looking at the difference between a pullback and a reversal and how you can spot the difference. So real quick, just as a refresher for most of you, when we're looking for a pullback, we're looking at, okay, what's my overall trend? Now we're looking at the daily chart on gold, right? And we know that we are bullish, clearly, okay? It's not a trend line, so don't come for me in the comments. <laughs> um, overall, we're bullish. Yet, since let's say, I don't know if that was mid-August, no, the beginning of August, since around here, <laughs> we've been seeing either, it's it's one of two, three things, right? We're either seeing one, a pullback, which is essentially when price, you know, kind of retraces against the current trend, or are we seeing a reversal? Now, knowing what we know about gold and how generally speaking in the economy, it's overall bullish, right? If we look at like the, the really long-term trend, we know it's more than likely a pullback here. But if we were just looking at any chart, how do we know that price isn't gonna continue on down? And the first thing I'll say is, well, we don't know. You never really know. Gold could tank, right? We do. That's the thing with the Forex market. It's so volatile. It's how we're able to get in and out and make a lot of money in a quick you know, fairly short period of time. That being said, there are things we can do to kind of confirm one or the other is happening and give us a good idea of market direction. Okay. So there are a few things that we can look at. The first thing being structure. Price action should be the leading, should be your leading indicator, right? Um, and I'm not actually using it as the indicator in the terms like, you know, an EMA or something like that. Um, but we really should use price action before anything else. When we actually look into adding other confluence, then, you know, we've already looked at price and we've assured ourselves we know where price is going based on overall structure. So looking at the chart right now, I'm just going to zoom us out a little bit. What I mean by structure is where are the points Okay, where price has respected before. What points has price respected before? Well, right off the bat, the last known kind of area of structure that has been respected is this area here. Now I'm gonna tell you, if we go back through history, we're not gonna find anything here. At least I don't think so. Let me really quickly, I just wanna see where a couple months ago came up to. Okay, it actually did. Um, Cause we are making new highs when we get up to this level. Okay, I wanted to make sure we're not thinking of, or I wasn't thinking of that, one second. Um, so we do have this level here that price has respected. So you can just, I'm just gonna draw a line cause we are on the higher time frame, and then we'll draw our zones in, okay? Um, so we do have that area there. We also have this area, but that's too low. I think I'm just gonna stick with that one guys. And you'll see why in a second. Just a second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was my phone. I'm sorry. Hopefully you didn't really hear that. I don't know why I was picking up my voice. All right. So we go back down to the daily time frame. So again, we're looking for structure, right? We're looking for relevant structure. So we know that this area was respected before. Okay, now the next area we can see, and this is actually what I was looking for, is the bottom of this wick. Although this, this does appear news related to me, I am gonna zoom out and just see if it has been respected. Okay, and I can't really see that way. Let me go to the weekly even, see what I can find here. I just wanna get a more clear picture. Okay, so this bottom level here, I'm gonna zoom you guys in. So where that wick touched before, and this is a line, this isn't even a zone, was perfectly respected before, okay? Perfectly respected. This is the weekly time frame, right? So price came on up and at the end of the week, perfectly respected that exact same area, okay? That tells me that's pretty significant because this was recent as well, um, somewhat recent in terms of, of Gold's history. So 
looking at the chart right now, these are my two kind of most relevant areas of structure. Now, I like to draw zones around these areas. That's how I prefer to do it. You guys know that if you know me. So what I would do is actually come and box in these areas to treat it as a zone. Just makes it a little more accurate in terms of entry, especially with gold because she's so volatile lately. Okay, so these are our two levels. So these would be the areas, both of these areas, I would look for rejection at to know if we actually have a break or a retest, okay? Because with a retest, what we're gonna see is exactly what happened here at this very significant area of structure that we can see has been respected very recently, okay? Even um, on this daily candle, we respected it, okay? Um, and it's been respected here. And we can see we had really strong rejection. We had a doji even on the daily time frame. If we were to go to the four hour, which I will do, so we can go down to the four hour and look at our rejection candles. Now we are we have a zone. So the first time it approached, really the doji we're seeing is like right here, this daily doji or this four hour doji. Um, but we don't have confirmation until we move out of that zone. So this would be your confirmation area right here. And that's good confirmation that we have a pullback. Now, if this area, because let's get into an actual reversal now, okay? If this area was completely broken, let's say price moved right down below this. So let's go back to the daily for a second. I'm using the daily because I do like to view structure on the higher time frames. I think it's much more accurate, especially with gold. If price had have continued on downward here, and I'm just, I, I am going to go off on a tangent for one second and we'll get right back to what I was saying. Another way we can really quickly confirm this, if you like fibs, I know we're focusing on price action, but would be to go from your most recent swing low, um, which I actually would include here. And I'm pretty sure I've showed you guys this before to, to our swing high and see if we're hitting the 50 to 61, eight area. And look what's right in the middle of the 50, 61, eight area is this level. So that further just confirms to me that this is a pullback because it displayed rejection right at this golden zone is what we call it between the 50 and 61.8. That's just something I wanted to, to add in really quick before, I, so I don't forget. <laughs> now, if price kept moving down below, let's actually get to that and I'm gonna just draw it in really quick. Let's say we moved right on below and we broke that zone, right? Is it now considered a reversal? To me, no. Okay, and I'll show you why. Another thing, and I should have led with this, but you guys probably know what I'm already going to add. On the daily time frame, let's look at the 200 EMA, which gives us a really, really good indication of overall direction of the market. I use the EMA opposed to trend lines. I do not like trend lines. I think they are just too subjective. They are not based on data, and I just don't personally like them. If you like to use them, by all means, use them. Like you don't need to argue me in the comments, just use them. That's perfect. If it works for you, awesome, okay? Um, that being said, for me, if because price is still above this 200 EMA, okay, that's what this is, on the daily, then if we get a break of this structure here, which is a daily zone, I'm still not going to short. Um, and if I am, I shouldn't say I'm not going to, because if I were day trading, if I were a day trader, absolutely. If you get a break of structure and a good breakout, you could take it. But for my style of trading, for swing trading or more long-term term positional trading, absolutely not. I'm not counter trend trading. And this would still be a bullish market to me because structure, I'm using this 200 EMA as my structure as well, has not been broken on the higher time frames. Okay. Um, let's get rid of this. So where would I consider a, ch a reversal? Really? So it's, would I say, okay, I, I need it to absolutely cross this line right here? No. Again, I always use price action, okay? I'm not trading based on this line. This is just an indication to me where the market's going. It confirms what I'm seeing with my eyes, right? We don't use indicators blindly to trade. What I would do next, sorry guys. I don't know why I do this. Okay. Um, what I would do next though, is look at my next most significant area of structure. And the next level that really um, stands out to me would be this 
uh, resistance slash support because it was respected as both here. Okay, now you could use the engulfing method to draw that candle in, but I'm fine just boxing it in really quick with my eyes because I know I've used this level a lot in the past. <laughs> so I'm kind of cheating a little bit. This is the next level of structure. And then we can see we also have a support. So we have a resistance there and we definitely have a nice support here as well. Okay, now looking at both of these things together, I, once this level is broken, okay, that would mean this 200 EMA is also broken. Then I would say, okay, for now, we have a, a trend direct redirection. Very, it's not likely going to happen with gold. <laughs> um, if we look back at gold, of course it does happen, but just really uncommon, especially like if we go to the higher time frames. Let's just look at this for a second. I don't even know where my two where my 200 EMA is gone. Okay, anyway, it doesn't want to work with me right now. But that's that's kind of how I would approach that. Let me make this bigger so it's not looking too odd. Hopefully, this is zoomed in enough for you guys. Let me know if I'm zooming in enough now. I'm really trying to keep that in mind when I'm analyzing for you uh, because I'm on such a big computer that to me it looks so clear. Um, when I upload, it's like sometimes not easy to see. So just let me know if there's any issues with that. But that would be what I'm breaking, waiting for here. And I'll just kind of draw it out to show you. So a break here, would I short? No. A break here, um, actually, and this level might actually do it, guys. So I'm wrong there. This level might actually do it. I think if we broke below this zone here, we're going to get a break of this 200 EMA. Okay, so this would actually do it, but it's the same thing that I mentioned down here. Um, that would be where I look for a reversal. Now, again, with gold, not very likely, doesn't happen very often that you get a reversal. It's just extremely bullish, but with other pairs, it works the exact same way. And that is how I, at least, look at the differences. So hopefully this helped you a little bit. Um, I'm going to post this shortly. Stay tuned for more stuff this week. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Lots of fun things coming to the space. I'm going to link my mindset program below. There's not too, too much time to le left to register for that because spots are limited. So I'm going to link it. That's on October 15th. It's going to be a lot of fun and really eye-opening for people. I think it's really, really beneficial. And that's it. That's all I have for you. I'll see you guys in the next video.